I thought it would be important to give you an example of how to use specific heat capacity. Um, so here I've just uh, looked at something that's, that's quite common on exams, but uh, also something common within physics SL. So this is an example where you're pouring something into something else. So in this example, you're pouring 200 grams of tea, and the tea is at 95 degrees Celsius. And you pour that tea into a glass cup that has, uh, well, it's 150 grams. That's its mass. Now that glass cup is initially at 25 degrees Celsius. So the question is, what will be the equilibrium temperature of the cup and the tea? I just have to get out of the way here so you can read. So what will be the equilibrium temperature? Now we're given the specific heat capacities of the tea and the glass. So we have uh, CT is just this and C glass is this. So it helps maybe to draw this situation, just a rough idea of what's happening here. So here what we have is um, some sort of cup here or some glass. That one's sitting there with you know, its own uh, heat capacity and whatever else. So maybe we've got a little mug here. And what we're doing, of course, is we're adding something hot to it. Okay? We're throwing tea into it. So the thing is now, the glass is at a certain temperature and the tea is at another temperature. You're going to put them together and, of course, uh, because they're at different temperatures, there's going to be energy transfer between the two. Remember we talked about that's heat, because heat is a transfer of energy. So because it's a transfer of energy, it's going to go from hot to cold, and eventually then the two will have transferred all the energy there is to transfer, and they'll just sit still at one temperature. That's what we call the equilibrium temperature. In other words, one of them will go down in temperature, one will go up until they reach something similar. In this case, the T is the hot one going into the uh, glass, which is the uh, cold one. So in that sense then we have one of them losing energy, one of them gaining energy. And remember what I said about specific heat capacity, the key to doing it is thinking about uh, energy lost and energy gained. In that case heat lost equals heat gained. So I'm going to use that then in order to solve this. So let's maybe write this out then. So uh, the Q lost equals Q gained. Remember Q means heat. So that means one of them loses energy, one of them gains energy. Which one loses energy? Well, the one that goes colder after you leave it. That's the T, because the T starts off hot and goes down in temperature. So in that case, then I can say then a Q. Hey, look, it's QT. Ha <laughs> ha. So it's QT uh, equals Q, let's say, glass. All right, that's what happens here. The situation could have been more complicated. I could have included two or three different things. Maybe there was uh, the cup, maybe the cup was sitting on something else that was hot or something like that. But in this case, I wanted to keep it fairly straightforward just so we can see the mechanics of using this. Um, and this is actually something that's actually quite common. This shows up a lot on exams, this type of idea here. Except normally they'll also throw in um, a phase change. So they'll say, now you're melting ice or something like that. And we'll see later that that's actually not very complicated. You just add an extra term uh, for the changing phase. So that's going to be the, something about the latent heat. So that's another Q value. But for right now, we're just uh, having T cool down and we're having the cup heat up. So in that case, then, we can write down an equation for these. Right? I'm just going to do these maybe uh, just a little bit over here just to give a bit of space. So Q of T, that's going to be the mass of the T times, because uh, remember the, oops, I should maybe write this down. The equation that governs all this is this one. Q equals MC delta T. So for each of these, there's a Q equals MC delta T for the T. That seems confusing, delta T for the T. And there's a MC delta T for the glass. So if I look at this then, I have MT CT times delta T T. That sounds confusing if you're just hearing it, delta T T, what does that mean? Right, but I mean we're drinking some tea here. Uh, so that's going to be the same as uh, what's gained. So in this case, M glass times C glass times delta T, oops, delta T glass. Let me just get out of the way so you can see this. 
Okay, so that's what we have to figure out. Now, uh, we're going to have to change the units. Uh, specifically speaking, we actually don't have to because if you look at this, we're, we're not adding or subtracting any weird things. So that just means that you could actually have the mass in grams if you wanted. But I'm just going to convert them to kilograms just to make the numbers a little bit nicer to look at. It doesn't really matter though. I could have left them in grams. So I'm just going to start filling things in now. So the mt, the mass of the t, well, this is 200 grams. If I want that in kilograms, it's just 0 0.2. That's going to be kilograms. Time is c of the t. So in this case right here, the specific heat capacity, I've actually just used a specific heat capacity of water because uh, the t itself will not really change the properties that much. So we have 4,186 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. All that times, now we have the change in temperature of the T. Now it's important here, here is actually where we've got something to calculate. So here we've got, now the T itself is going to uh, lose energy. So that means it's going to start at 95 degrees Celsius. I could have, by the way, also converted this to Kelvin. But this one uh, doesn't really matter. It turns out as long as you use the same units throughout this equation, you'll be okay. So I'm just going to say 95 minus T. And this, this capital T here is going to be the temperature I'm looking for. That's the equilibrium temperature. All that's going to be equal, and I'll do the same thing here. So the glass, the glass is going to be, well, the mass of the glass is 0 0.15 uh, kilograms times its specific heat capacitor, 840 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. All that's going to be times. Now this time, the T is going to be reversed. In other words, there's going to be a high equilibrium temperature compared to its initial temperature of 25. So in this case, that was the key to doing this, I think, is just setting it up correctly, just taking your time. By the way, these are degrees Celsius here. So if I do this then, I have a 95 minus T, and here I have a T minus 25. It's important to have it that way. If you get it the other way around, you could make a mistake. Okay, so remember, it's this one here. It's because this one loses energy. So it starts off at some high temperature and goes down to a lower one. That lower one is the equilibrium one we're looking for. So I know it's lower than 95. That's why I say 95 minus that, whatever value it is. Conversely, over here, we're gaining energy, which means in the end, the equilibrium temperature is higher than the 25 degrees that it started at. So for this glass, it starts off at 25, its temperature is going to go up. So because of that, then 25 is lower than whatever value this is. Now it's just a matter of solving for T. So I'm going to use my trusty calculator. I'm just going to figure out this right here. So 4186 times 0.2. That might be a little bit nicer to work with. So 837.2, and that's going to be um, times 95 minus T. And that's going to be equal to 0 0.15 times 840. So that magic number is going to be 126 times T minus 25. Well, then I can just multiply this out. So I'm going to multiply this by this and this by this. So there I get, let's see, 837.2 times 95. That gives me some big number, 79,534 minus 837.2t. All that's going to be equal 126t, because now I'm multiplying this one out, and 126 times... 25, that's going to be 3150. I'm almost there. So this is just now a matter of just some calculations. Um, I want to get my t's on the same side. So uh, because I have minus 837.2t, I'm going to move that one over here by adding it. And I'm going to take this one away over here by adding it. So in that sense, I'm going to have, let's see here, I'm going to do this all in one step. So I'm going to do 79534. I'm going to add to that 3150. That'll give me 82684 equals, and here I'm going to do 126t plus 837. 
So that's going to give me 963.2 t. And then I want to get t by itself, so I'm going to divide this by this because I want to get rid of that one. So that gives me then 82684, divide that by 963.2. And I get an answer, finally, of t equals, uh, let's see here, I can use three digits. Oh, I can only use two here. So I'm going to say roughly 80, it's supposed to be 85.8 is what my calculator says. So I can only use two digits, so I'm going to say 86 degrees Celsius. That's going to be the final answer here. So it may have seemed a little bit annoying with all the units and things right there to take care of, but the key to solving this potentially really nasty looking question is just understanding and recognizing that when you look at specific heat capacity, all you have to do is keep track of which one loses energy, which one gains energy, and use your equation for specific heat capacity and just watching out for your 95 minus t and the t minus 25. In the end, you can solve all sorts of crazy looking questions just by using specific heat capacity.